just looking at my MySpace and or the PayPal and MySpace. <laughs> yeah, my MySpace face. Hey everybody, welcome to Curlin Nation episode thirteen. Just another front ender. Uh, <laughs> thirteen. Jesus. On today's episode, uh, I'm Joel Dietz, joined by Mike McDermott, Craig Brown, uh, Garrett. Uh, is in bed because he got his COVID shot today, so he, he got a little tired. Yeah. Uh, which is understandable because I got mine and I got a little tired too. That's good. So, uh, we're getting good there. For him. We're getting there. Hopefully, by the end of the season, we can have everybody available to be in studio, but I like it. We'll, oh, hopefully, we'll be able to do something by next season. Yeah. Uh, to end the show, we're joined by Colin Hodgson, uh, aka Haji, uh, lead for. Manitoba team Mike McEwen, also co owner and co founder of Dynasty Curling Apparel. Uh, you've seen their stuff on the Briar, the Scotties, World, Slams. Um, they make some pretty cool stuff. Positive vibes only. We don't want to hear if you have negative comments about Dynasty Curling Apparel. If you got ne negative vibes, yeah. you're, you're wrong because their stuff was Take a hike, was Karen. <laughs> 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 uh updates around the u.s curling world uh lone star curling club announced they they're gonna build some dedicated ice uh good for them <laughs> uh, did you see that video i watched a little bit of it it was i <laughs> did they want to open up i don't know i thought it was kind of funny. like good for them on opening up like that's that's awesome but i just thought it was funny like I think they must have been sitting around like after league at at an arena or some something, and and they were like, uh, "These are two guys from Michigan, and uh, and we're gonna have dedicated ice next year." And then there was like a, a rousing it was like, "Yay!" Well, because of COVID, they're all yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure yeah, they're all spread out. Can't have too many. Yeah, I, I I just thought it was funny. Were the good for them? Don't get yeah. me wrong. I, Good for them, but dedicated ice means it's probably not awful. Yep, it's in Austin, uh, which means there's probably good barbecue. Yep, uh, Austin is pretty awesome music scene. Uh, I'm in. If you have a spiel, let us know because yep. I want to come. Yes. So we, yeah, we definitely want to be there for the barbecue music Austin South by Southwest spiel. Yeah, in we we have a team. So or guys, two, if you need to fill it up. Were the guys from Detroit, like, were they building it? Or were they I don't know. I, I have out? no clue what they uh, I didn't even think they said yeah. Detroit. They're like, this is... Michigan. I, yeah, I think the one Michigan guy's guys. name was Ben, and there was yeah. another... Because the guy from the Lone Star was just, like, sitting there, and he was just, like, he was, like, leaning back, and he's like, hey, I got some news. It's like, here are these two guys from Michigan, and we're going to have dedicated ice. <laughs> And it was like, that was it. That was the announcement. It was like, I and the, apparently they're gonna have it by this fall. So good on them. I don't, That's I don't. I mean, we have no information on it. I'm assuming they got some sort of That's uh, pretty, warehouse, or yeah. they're gonna. That's slap pretty quick. Down. We hope it works out. Like, I hope. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I hope it works out. Like, hopefully, we can have mine to figure out. Like, yeah, maybe. What are you doing? What can you share to make ice that quick? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I just thought it was funny. I kind of yeah. I kind of chuckled when I saw. Uh, <laughs> Lone Star Curling Club. Check them out on face Facebook. Uh, the video is up there. Yep. Also, Rock Creek Curling in Colorado is continuing to build. Yep, that's They're north of Denver. North of Denver, they're uh, continuing to build. I would go spiel out there too. I'm gonna spiel. I definitely. Would My do. wife is gonna hate me next year. <laughs> Maybe not even next year, like yeah. next curling season, which would start in I don't know September. I think there's something gonna, October. There's what do we think be, the curling season? There's going to be a lot of that. Like spiels are going to have. Oh wait, my god! Spiels are going to have a wait list is a mile long. Oh, I'm going to spiel a lot. I think it's going to be awful. But I'm tired of writing. Just but that stim that, that stimmy check hit. Yeah. Put it in the bond spiel budget. Put it in the bond spiel bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know if we touched on this or not. Uh, Women's World. Well, I think we griped bubble. about it on the 
podcast. Maybe we I think griped about it after one, hours. Yeah. I think the last the last time I think uh, Women's Worlds had been officially announced yet, but it was uh, it's in there now. It's going to be yeah. happening. Women's Worlds in the Calgary bubble. It's going to yeah. happen. That's good. Good for yeah. them for for figuring that out and putting it, slapping it in there at the end. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks for Cal. Cal Calgary to extending yeah, their good job Calgary their uh, time in there because I know I'm sure that lot, that's a lot of work and a lot of volunteers. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. We've had two people on and haven't really asked about the volunteers. I always pimp the volunteers when I do like triathlons and stuff, and those guys not. I mean, also, but for but, if you're volunteering, like the best thing a volunteer can do is probably not interact with athletes and yeah, get them pretty to sure, Rona. I'm pretty sure the athletes are doing their thing and getting out of there. Go back to the hotel. Oh yeah, but so. I mean, there's still probably you know, oh there are volunteers that are yeah doing whatever. I mean, volunteers make it make the dream work, but uh, yeah. So and we good have women's worlds. We don't know about mi mixed doubles. Mixed worlds. doubles worlds has officially asked. Oh, they have. I I, I believe so. I believe no. they've officially asked. Uh, I don't <laughs> think they've been. Please, sir, can I have some more? Can I have some more curling? Yeah. Can I have some more curling? I don't know if that's been... The mixed doubles is going on now, the Canadian mixed doubles. That got added to the ESPN3. Yeah. I've watched a lot. i watched some. Yeah. Brian and Kathy are knocking it out of the park. Of course. Because that's Brian and Kathy. So. Uh, crummy news in the curling world. Um, not USA curling, but... If you if you know competitive curling, uh, Craig Savile is one of the good guy one of the good guys in curling. Mm -hmm. um, beat cancer once, and I guess just recently um, it's come back. Had, yeah, yeah, had to come back. So he's fighting that. Um, we don't know a whole lot, but. Uh, I did see Balance Plus. If you want, if you want to do something good for, for him and his family, uh, you know, uh, Balance Plus put this out there. I don't know how. Let's see. Uh, it's just. Let's see what's today. Today's the twenty third. They tweeted this out on the eighteenth. Um, they've got like a uh, red apron, which I think is like blue apron or. Uh, Eat fresh, or what is it? Fresh, something fresh. Hello, fresh. Here in the United States, um, give them a call. Uh, the number up there is six one three six nine five zero four one seven. You can make a donation to um, the account for Craig Savile, or uh, it's under Karen Cumberland, which is his wife's name. Um, they can pick out meals and stuff. Uh, Otherwise, just send uh, send good vibes Savile's way because he's a good dude. Um, and if you're ever feeling down, uh, what was it? The last Briar. 19 Briar, I think, in Ontario. Uh, they let him come out and throw a couple rocks mm -hmm. at the end of a game that didn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, if, it didn't, if that didn't doesn't hit you in the feels, I don't know what does. Yeah. Because... Because he's one of the good dudes. He's a good curler. Yeah, take a look at it. Redapron.ca. The account is under Karen Cumberland. Mm -hmm. uh, the number again to the number to Red Apron, 613-695-0417. Yeah. So, yeah. get I better, mean, Craig. If you want to do something. Yep. Otherwise, yeah, just send, uh, send good vibes this way. But... Uh, right now we've got a good conversation with Haji talking about the Briar Bub Bubble and Dynasty Curling and their apparel. It's good stuff. Go. All right, uh, we're joined this week by a real good curler. Uh, he sweeps some. Uh, he makes clothes. He plays on Team McEwen. Uh, what else? I don't even know anything else about Colin Hodgson. We're going to learn a whole bunch of fun stuff. So here he is this week, Colin Hodgson. How's it going, man? Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining Curling Nation. Thanks, yo. What's up? Cheers. Cheers. To the weekend. Even though it's, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday starts the weekend. 
Yeah. So yeah, we had you on. Uh, you do. You're a man of many hats. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did our like kind of Scotties wrap up after the uh, Scotties and uh, and many hairstyles too. Yeah. Oh yeah, you do have many hairstyles. Looks uh, pretty pretty calm today. So yeah. What do you what do you? Oh, you got you got, got a little bit of the. Oh man, look at that. That looks less calm. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. The parts away is just for the beer. Oh yeah. wow! It's like it's like part slash. <laughs> yeah, it's like you need like a it. yeah you need a top hat and a guitar. And you look All right, like I have slash. a question. Speaking right. of beer, what did uh, what'd you do for beer in the bubble? Good question. Um, so I was fortunate enough to be blessed with um, planning skills. So what I did was. <laughs> friend of mine is the uh he runs our one liquor store up here where we live and he brought in some comfort beer for me so one of my favorite beers ever is japanese it's acai so he brought me in a case of that so oh, then i stuff. drove it 18 hours with me and then what i also did was i went in there and i picked one of everything that i wasn't allergic to so it probably really pissed him off when he had to scan individually each different beer. And I'm still going through them. So that's why I have a Smithwick. Nice. Smithwick's tonight. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Got it. So you, you took beer with you. What uh, what did teams do that didn't have the wherewithal to bring their own beer? Or if they planned wrong and got Or, yeah, or if delivery. they got out early and drank all their beer. Well, the thing about if you get out early, you get you know, kick to the curb. You got to, you got to get the hell out of there. So, oh, okay. um, if you're out early, you got to leave the next morning. Um, oh. so I was on the road at about seven thirty AM the next day after our last day at Friar. But, um, pretty much if you didn't have any, it would have just cost you, uh, an arm and a leg to get some extra delivery set. Cause you had no ability to go to the liquor store or anything. And if you order from the hotel bar, um, you know, you're, paying a pretty premium price for beer yeah <laughs> got it so you could, you could get food to, and beer or whatever delivered to the hotel as long as you didn't go out correct um the there used to not be delivery service for that kind of thing or it'd be very sporadic in canada it's not a very common thing where you could order beer over the internet but cool. i think covid ch- changed those restrictions a little bit um yeah. So yeah, I guess once you once you uh, got through the protocols, uh, you couldn't order in until your negative test came back, though. Okay. So yeah. you had to order all strictly room service for the first couple of days you were there, pretty much, and then after mm. that, um, you know, got some meal meal planning service uh, partnership. You know, Fit Kitchen was an awesome company, and they're feeding a lot of people now in there because it's kind of hard to get healthy, non-processed uh, meals. When you're trying to be in that environment for so long, I think it's important to try to find that kind of stuff. That'd be a good way for someone to get tipped really well is to just be the uh, task rabbit for the bri- briar teams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you need beer, send me. I'll go. Yeah, I'll go get beer. Yeah, no problem. Or worlds. Maybe we should, well, or we world. can't go up for worlds because yeah. we can't get across the border. We but. can't. Maybe we can now that we're vaccinated, but uh, maybe I doubt it. I still doubt it. I don't know. Still anyway, scary. yeah. Um, I wouldn't let us in if I was Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't scary. get sick. I consume too much alcohol. That kills mm-hmm. germs. Right. Um, All right. I got another bubble question. Can yeah, I ask another bubble question? Yes. Go. Did you guys, did everybody have their own room? Or was it only the first couple days that everybody had their own room? And then after that, you went back to like normal life of two in a room? Yeah, everybody had their own room. Uh, usually at the Briar, that's what does happen. Um, oh. Each player gets their own room, and then you pay for extra ones oh. on top of that. But uh, throughout the bubble, everyone will have their own room, and you won't be able to congregate in your teammates' rooms. The like, only thing you can do is have one designated room, which which would have been our coaches. Uh, and most teams did it that way. But so like, could... I had nobody in my room the whole time. So you guys could all go to your coach's room. But that was the only room where you could congregate. Yes. Got it. 
Yeah, because we had we had okay. Matt Dunstone on for our watch party, and he he was like, "Yeah, guys will go to the rooms," but he I guess he didn't explain it all that clearly. Mm -hmm. That I guess that makes sense for tracing purposes that you can have one designated room. And he said, "Kind of, you could kind of go to the bar in the hotel." And sit with your team and kind of holler back and forth at each other, like across the booths. But you couldn't really hang out with the other teams. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, I never actually made it down. The only time I made it down to the hotel bar was I needed Lame. some. Uh, Lame. I needed some ranch. <laughs> <laughs> I had a party on my balcony the whole the whole week, though. I was I was seeing if we could get. Um, some some gas burners in so I could flambe some scallops on scallops on the balcony oh, and nice. then create an intricate pulley system. Forty five degrees. Brad T was below me, so I was hoping of doing like with like a bowl and with a on a carabiner with scallops for for Mr. Teeson. So that would have been my if I could do it all over again, I would get a camping bring the camping. Uh, uh, burners outside and a, and a nice bottle to flambe with. There you go. All right. Well, <laughs> you are you, you're a pretty fancy chef though too, aren't you? Are you are you classically trained or do you just are you how how trained are you as a chef? I know you're a pretty good cook. I don't know if you're technically a chef, but yeah, most I, I went to culinary school in Edmonton. Um, okay. Most of the pretty much all my experience comes from just working in the industry though uh culinary school was 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 all right it was um maybe not the best time in my life for me to take information in but uh but yeah like learning cooking for like the the at the blue bomber stadium in winnipeg um you know when you're cooking for like hundreds or thousands of people it kind of it's different that's for sure that's to cook yeah. for like jay-z and beyonce when they came whoa through. name dropping what? it wow. was dope that's pretty fancy, though. it was dope her her um manager or, or somebody or assistant i guess i should say handler. followed handler followed us around <laughs> to make sure we didn't mess with the food which was pretty cool i was like yeah i'm not messing with the food i'm so scared right now <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good that's awesome but yeah that that's my kind of most of my cooking background working at golf courses and whatnot and got it just uh so did you yeah, get to, I was to see for Beyonce a at all? So I gotta ask, like, did you get to see them at all, or just send them send the food along with the handlers? No, no. When you're cooking during shows or or, or football games, things like that, I never got to see anything. Hmm. Pretty much underground the whole time, just making sure people, you know, yeah. people who are having choice beverages get their get their wings. <laughs> I like wings. I do like wings. I do like wings. All right. Uh, yeah. How, I mean, what what was your Briar experience like? I mean, I, I mean, you guys obviously didn't play how, you didn't finish how you wanted to, but, I mean, was it weird? Was it, I mean, there was, I mean yeah, I'm not, not to ask. Not your first bri Briar, but yeah. the first one without fans. Yeah, hopefully the only one without fans, right? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty dry. Uh, it's definitely different to play out there. A lot of guys were more angry than they normally were, <laughs> is what I noticed. Because <laughs> there's no way to kind of, like, keep you in check, so people were getting pretty mad. Um, but it was interesting. Uh, now, I guess. Just, was that just your team not playing very well, more angry, or all the team? <laughs> no, a lot of the teams. When It was kind of weird because you could hear someone, like, 120 feet away say something normal, oh, like yeah. someone's in a hack. You know, if they're talking towards you and bouncing off the ice or whatever, you can hear pretty clearly what guys are saying from the other end. So it's weird to be, like, putting your hand in front of your mouth <laughs> quietly. It's like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steal third, man. Steal yeah, third. Let's okay. go. Nice. Um, but, but, yeah, it was definitely a different experience. It's not as good without fans there. Uh, obviously, right. curler, or fa fans is good. I think what maybe would have been helpful would have been just pumping some noise in there somehow, like NBA games, pump music. I think I would have preferred that a little. Yeah, um, for sure. Because the communication went way up. So, like, the, the quality of play is pretty good. If mm -hmm. teams were able to practice more before, Yeah. Um, that would have been helpful. Because, like, it was wild, different. 
how much teams could practice depending on where they were from Canada. Right. Yeah. How much did you guys practice before you got there? Well, I wasn't allowed to see my team and practice with my team ever. Right. I because I live oh. in Ont- Northern Ontario, so I can't cross the border oh. without going through different protocols. So I had to drive uh, our our club closed in our town, so I had to drive for two practice sessions. It was sixteen hundred kilometers, so thousand miles to, for six practice sessions is what I did. Dang. So I was like, well, this kind of sucks, and I have to <laughs> practice by myself. Um, just warm the body up so you don't you don't get too injured. Yeah, that's kind of what my pre-event practice was like, and then quarantine before to make sure I don't you know, get COVID and then bring it to the bubble. Um, but the timing was different. So my teammates were able to practice right before the event where I practice weeks before the event. And then I quarantined, but then they were allowed to, able to practice. So the rules were different in different places. Um, mm-hmm. Go to some other spots in Canada, teams were able to practice essentially the whole time. But no competitions were able to happen. So it, it's just yeah. a mixed bag. You know, yeah. Kerry Anderson's team figured it out. They had yeah. no practice ice when they went and won, so right. that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And uh, where did you where do you live, and where did you have to drive to go practice? I live in Bombertown, Ontario, and I went to Fort Francis, okay. which has it's a Canadian and U.S. club, I believe. Got uh, people from both sides of the border who play there because it's right. It's a border city or town mm-hmm. as well. Not this year. This year, it's probably just the Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> this year yes yeah no i was really fortunate to be able to to set something up where we were able to safely practice but it was a heck of a heck of a journey to get there every every you know every week wow i didn't realize that i thought you were still living in winnipeg how far in northern ontario are you how far from winnipeg are you so i'm five and a half hours from winnipeg i'm six hours from thunder bay I'm about six hours from Duluth and about eight hours from Minneapolis, just straight north of Mini. Got it. Huh. We're at the end of the highway. We got a nice road. Sounds we have nice. a nice road and a Tim Hortons. It's awesome. That's all you <laughs> need, right? Yeah. Nice. Hmm. And what what took you there? Met a girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's the I presume the one you just got engaged to? That's true, yep. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. That it wasn't a different girl. No, it's not. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> Ball, no, it's a great town on, on Red Lake. That's the one. Man, that is, man, that is up there. Whew. Yeah. Do you not drive six yeah, hours just, just to get to anything? That's exactly yeah. right. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's, pretty, pretty. it's probably pretty. The fishing yeah. is the fishing's amazing. Yeah. All right. Yep. I'm in. I like to fish. What can you fish? Check it out. We got lots of rock. walleyes, pike. Yeah. The, uh, mostly walleye. Mostly but yeah, walleyes. there's a lot of everything up here. What? I like uh, walleyes. What do you got Some there perch. for bon- What do you got there for bond spiels? Yeah. Whatever. Whatever we decide to run. <laughs> I like. You don't have answer. to have an existing one. You can always yeah. make one up. <laughs> I made up a curling clothing company, <laughs> and now there is one. Nice. Make up a bond spiel. I like it. So how long have you been there? Um, just just about two years now. Okay. And, yeah, it's wicked. In the, just getting ready to fire up at the golf course. Nice. We're playing a lot of golf this summer, hopefully. You a good golfer? Not too bad. Not too I'm okay. Bad. I need... I need a lot of practice. That's why I work at a golf course every day. So you're like a 15. A little lower than that. Probably somewhere between six and an eight. Whoa. All right. You're way better than I am. Okay. Deal. All right. Uh, Where do you run Dynasty then out of Northern Ontario? Is your pretty fancy paint? What's your official title at Dynasty? I am a co-owner of Dynasty. And I run the sublimated apparel side of the business and the marketing. Got it. Okay. How long we, ago? We all kind of jump in and do yeah. random stuff for the yeah. most part. <laughs> well, when you're a co-owner, you do you wear many hats, I would imagine. Uh, I was a delivery long... boy for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> no, that happened. So who else? Yeah. Who are the other co-owners? 
Uh, Farron Ashram is is the other big one. He's a baseball coach up here, and just a uh, just a good dude. He we we met kind of through Matt Dunstone and Team of Dean and having you know some beverages like this, and we just decided to start a company one day, and it was pretty yeah super random. Uh, how it all happened and I never thought I'd be making clothing but here we are so what was your initial like proposal like you want to say like these uh uh one of the old ones these pacer ja jackets are crap like I want a better <laughs> jacket coat like <laughs> well it was um the first time I can remember it was John Epping brought in sublimation and playing with like Curtis with uh sorry Scott Bailey um Scott Howard, I think, and Dave Mathers was on that team, and they were wearing different apparel back. And that was this was probably nine, ten years ago where I first saw it. I said, "Wow, that's so sharp, and it's different. It's not embroidery or screen printing where you put it on the garment; it's into it, and it can be totally custom." So I saw that. I'm like, "That's cool." And then a couple of years later, just ended up meeting my business partner. He said, "Hey, why don't we start a clothing company? Or a curling clothing company?" I said, "Yeah, sure, okay." <laughs> How do we do that? <laughs> yeah, that sounds great, man. Like, all right. And then all of a sudden, like, he had some connections, figured out where to where to make the apparel. Um, I had connections with teams and some people, you know, there just wasn't a lot of teams who wore it back then or needed sponsorship. And then once we got into that market, then there was other companies and teams were able to sell themselves through mm -hmm. the how their uniforms looked. A good example is just with the team at Dean Viking Design, that kind of really mm -hmm. brought people, you know, was a really fans cool design. into it. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool design to sell. That Yeah, that's the kind of where we're going with it is like, well, maybe we should market differently instead of getting, you know, golf jackets and putting embroidery on them. Maybe we could do this a little different and look cool and rad. So that's kind of where that came, but it would never would have happened if we didn't have like a really good designer. Um, you know, patient people as I was grinding through how to actually make their clothing and screwing it up a bunch of times. I screwed Val Sweetings up a boatload of times. Chelsea <laughs> Carey's like... Whoops. <laughs> yeah, like starting it up was a nightmare. Um, and then it kind of grew to a point where it's like, okay, well, how do I make money now? Because I can't work a real job because I'm spending all my time. <laughs> so... How do we figure this out? So, anyways, it's been a it's been a wild journey that I never thought we'd, we'd get Got into it. making clothing. Yeah, but so it's, it's fine. We're making the U.S. stuff for the world. This is the first Good. time that men's and women's teams are wearing Dynasty in a couple of weeks. So I'm jacked about that. So this is not your full time job, but it's more than a part time job. It at least pays for itself. And it's my full time job now. Is after okay. about eight years of doing it, definitely. Yeah, it. And nice. then in the summer. Yeah, somewhere working at the golf course and and doing some management there is that's just like a dream job. I don't know, it's pretty obvious. Curlers like curling and golf, the seasons yeah, they don't work together at all. <laughs> right, right. Uh, this is your what third year, second year doing all of the Scotties and Briars jerseys. This is our fourth year. Third year. Third year. Third year. Third year. I thought yeah, the women's the are coming up. Yeah, I thought the women's jerseys were awesome. Those are pretty good. Not to say that the w men's weren't great, but the women's were awesome. Like the retro look that you guys came up with was just—it was perfect. I thought. Yeah, I think it's fun to do that. You can't do it all the time, but to bring it back for a 40th anniversary, and there's there's some big Briar anniversaries coming up too, so we could do something unique as well. Um, but people, that, that was hit and miss. People loved it and hated it. Like, really? the amount of hate mail yeah. I got was, like, <laughs> ten times what I would normally get. Wow. That people hated them. Do but wanna... the amount of yeah. love we got was, like, a hundred times. So. I like it. Do you want to call out any Karens specifically that you got hate mail from? I mean, our one listener. Um. <laughs> Not specifically. I will, no, I will no. like, I can, like, refer to a comment, though, as someone, if they're listening, they might, well, they'd remember saying it, but what did they say? They said, they said that Dynasty screwed the material up so bad and were so cheap that we put them in potato sacks 
for this for the Scotties. And I'm and they and then they went on to say like <laughs> the briar apparel is so much nicer. Why did they use that material for the women's? And I'm like, it's the same material <laughs> for the same role. It's an optical illusion. It just does. It has a different picture on it, lady. <laughs> They didn't understand that it was wow. supposed to be like a sweater. Yeah. Yeah. So and, I guess explain yeah. explain sublimation. I mean, you kind of did that it's, you know, printed on. Uh, but explain sublimation for us lay folk who may not know exactly what it is. The easiest way of saying it is whatever you can design, you need a very talented designer who needs to know the rules. Like It's like building furniture. So it's very similar to like Ikea furniture where you need to know like what needs to like overlay what's going to, where's the sewing clearance going to happen. And, and so Mm -hmm. sublimated stuff pretty much it gets printed on what for a lack of better term, it would be printed on something like wax paper and then the paper, like a transfer paper and it gets pushed into the material Mm -hmm. with a ton of pressure and a ton of heat. So it'd be like 500 degrees or something. Mm-hmm. they'll take a ton of pressure push it in and they it actually goes into the garment and it stays locked in so yeah. then like they'll never bleed when you wash them or anything like that it must your dryer gets to like 300 degrees which probably isn't a good thing which you're probably doing something uh, wrong then yeah that's bad <laughs> yes <laughs> got it so they get they get printed in different like on a full piece of canvas and then there's a laser you know we we draw these pink little dots along the outside and okay. it goes under camera and then the camera figures out where they are and a laser cutter comes down and just goes like doo, 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 cuts it all out every little piece has an individual code on it so that's how they hand organize them they get put into a sewing line so one person will just do like sleeves one person will just do zippers one person will just do collars um so there's a whole line of sewing that needs to happen mm-hmm. uh for, for it to all come together so you know, there's jerseys, there's jackets, there's hoodies, there's, we do pants now, do like flags, do like big promotional stuff. It's kind of cool how it all comes together. Um, but yeah, it's, so really, if you have a good enough designer, you can do anything with the apparel. So you can That's be awesome. truly super creative. How many? Like, I think one time we had a cat, we had a cat on the front is the front of the cat and on the back is the back of the cat and there's a star on the back where it's uh, <laughs> nuclear explosion going on behind the cat like what is this <laughs> but they're wicked nice. designs so awesome how so how many teams do you know how many teams you have at like men's worlds and women's worlds and um yeah well we work with a lot of the teams at, at the world championships on the regular but their their national sport organizations have different contracts mm-hmm. so there's some teams we're doing custom masks for um team to cruise is gonna they're always they're colorful guys they're funny they're gonna come out with some cool masks i won't ruin the surprise of what they're doing yet but they had some good ideas um sweet germany the germany uniforms are always some of my very favorite they're so clean and you know they're very detail orientated i absolutely very german yeah yes yes (laughs) big fan of those the white the white german uniforms like when you can go look at them up close are just like perfect awesome um so yeah we're doing u.s canada germany uh we're doing estonia for the women's worlds um excited about those yeah and then yeah lots of the other teams we work with on the regular but cool you know they can't wear that at the worlds but there's grand slams right after too that we're trying to make sure we have apparel for as well i'd assume you do it yeah so has covid made supplying teams harder easier i would assume harder but yeah uh getting everybody set up making sure they're working from home things like that but we we got some really good employees that are very self-motivated thank goodness um because it's hard for me to even motivate myself sometimes but yeah, working from home, yeah. just making sure stuff gets done, staying on top of it, that's tough. Uh, but they do a pretty good job of it. We're, we're kind of using the time to refine our lines and expand into new things. We're working on baseball lines right now, golf, uh, some different partnerships and ways to get into those markets and try to get on television for them too. So doing some cool stuff. 
should be so, some web.com tour guys potentially wearing our stuff in the near future. Nice. Uh, how, how big is Dynasty Curling? Um, well, we, or is we that have about 12. How many, how many employees do you have? Yeah. Between all the companies, we're somewhere between, we're about 12 employees right now. Between all the, all the companies, what is that? We, we do screen printing and embroidery as well. Ah, okay. Um, so He's stuff like his, this. This has got his hats. Got gotcha. That's your blackout, yeah. that's your blackout Toba sweatshirt, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I probably am. I yeah. assume I assume yeah. ours are coming in the mail. Yeah. I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm I assume you're wrong. <laughs> I, oh, I, I am yours, man. Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's probably not going to fit. But uh, yeah, I am going to have to order the uh, uh, bu Buffalo Mid Midnight hat. I do like I do rad. like that hat. <laughs> Pretty rad. I want to. I want to do it on charcoal though. Charcoal background with black. I think that'd be tight. Ooh, uh, let me know when that 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 one's out. I'll buy it. All right. Well, we can make them. Whatever you want, man. It's your world. I'm just living in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is our na nation. That's what it is. This is our nation, not our world. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. What else? <laughs> um. Hey, uh, I got a quick non-related question. What's the uh, what's the deal with the cornrow behind your head? Oh yeah, there you go. That's a 1987 Edmonton Briar cornrow. Nice. Who Did used anybody it? in particular give that to you, or? Yeah. Um, so that would have been an important one of a family member might have passed away. Uh, would have been one of the last events they would have went to. Um, they died before I was born, so I was born at 90. So that was a uh, yeah, it's a cool thing. Um, I got the corn broom given to me as a birthday gift a couple of years ago by people who held on to it since then. And they had a plastic wrapped up and everything. It's just a amazing gift. And then I went to Crow Manitoba to ask them who did some of their shadow boxes, like, uh, like those, like with our hearts and crests, they give those nice things in, instead of putting on a jacket, which I think is, is wicked cool. So we got the same person to do it, and then Crow Manitoba just decided they had some pins in the archives, and they added some 1987 Briar pins into theirs. So it's pretty, hey. uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's pretty good. That's oh, pretty nice. awesome. I just need yeah. to like hack a dart and blow it in there so the felt smells like cigarette smoke a little bit, <laughs> but it's perfect like a curling pump. <laughs> It's yeah, it's it's suede and everything. <laughs> yeah, spill a little beer on it too. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, it every time I look at it, at it, it reminds me of the Lacombe Curling Club. And when I was like definitely too young to be in there, and there's this guy named Ross with a clown, and he did like a like a kid friendly show, and then he did an adult one, and my parents were like, ah, oh, whatever. Colin's like twelve. He's good. He's he's good. <laughs> I still can. Be, I, I still think of Ross with a clown. Like my goodness, that guy was rank. Back you you became a man that day. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, and I can just smell him. Smell him when I look at that felt. Like, right. Felt smells like Roscoe wonder, the clown. I wonder if Roscoe the clown's still around. Like he's, you know, three time. You know, three time. Three different guys now, but he's still Roscoe the clown is still around. I'd be. That'd be a thing. He he reminded me of Krusty the Clown a little bit, so God. I don't know if he would have lived that. I don't know. He could surprise <laughs> me, but Krusty. All <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. Are you guys? How are you looking for uh, Olympic trials? Uh, well, <laughs> we got a shot. Yeah. We don't really know what's yeah. going on. We don't really know what's going on with them because. Yeah. Um, because they named five teams, so we're we're ranked fifth this year. Okay. But for you know they named five teams, and we weren't ranked in. We're ranked fifth, but we didn't make the top five for the trial spots that got announced. Hmm. They put a team was ranked below us, and so it's a little confusing at this time what's going to happen. But um, it seems like there's going to be a five-team event for two spots 
to go from five teams to seven teams in the trials. And then whoever loses out of those five teams, the three teams, mm -hmm. will go to another event and play in the pre-trials for two spots for the remaining two. Oh. Ooh. So there might be multiple events, but we don't know where or when they are yet. Got it. How many so teams will be in that second event? Do you know? In the pre-trials? Don't really know. I would think it's somewhere between 15 and 18. I would yeah. think. I um, have to double-check that one, though. There was an announcement about pre-trials uh, a few days ago that came out. I'll have to double-check that one. I didn't see that. I saw an announcement. I think they said it was going to be in, like, Nova Scotia. Uh... But I don't, I don't remember the town. But I, I feel like I was watching mixed doubles, and they said something about Nova Scotia for free trials. So um, I mean, the start, I think start I have a different statement. Though. I'm no, Nova Scotia is. I'm a normal, starting to think that normal. you might be the problem <clears throat> with your teams not getting into events because you, <laughs> uh, for no apparent reason, didn't get into mixed doubles. Now your <laughs> men's team getting into trials. Maybe maybe you're the, the reason. Maybe you're the connection here. You know what? I think about that before I go to sleep every night and then <laughs> when I wake up. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what? I'm not, I'm not sure what it is. It's, you know, there's reasons things happen and, and sometimes you got to live with them and sometimes you got to fight them a little bit and figure out what, what, what the deal is. So that's kind of the... The thing is, just try to figure out what's going on, what the implications are, and then, you know, just do what I got to do to 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 win. Really, yeah. Um, get any events, play well. I'm not too worried about playing well at events. It's just more so everything around it. How is it all going to function? Are we going to be in bubbles? Are we going to be quarantining? What does that do to our daily jobs? There's just so many questions around it that are more anxieties than anything. Just trying to figure that out. Got it. Um, yeah, I'm sure Curling Canada is having a real fun time trying to plan, you know, more than two, two, two weeks out with all the COVID stuff. So uh, I don't envy anybody in charge right now. Yeah. Yeah, that can't be understated. It's uh, there's, there's so many moving parts and things that can go wrong. So there's tons of things that need to be done, need to be done properly, and tons of people that need to work together. So. It's, it's difficult to make any of this run. It's pretty amazing that there's a bubble, like the bubble even has happened, and so far there hasn't been any positive test results. Being part of that, though, it's understandable why there isn't positive test results. You know, there's some back-in-the-nose cavities that have definitely gotten expanded uh, <laughs> over the past yep. <laughs> over the past five weeks, my goodness. Dude, the brain tickle, that's not I've fun. I've had the brain tickle, it's not yeah. fun. Um, no. Is that the one they were doing for uh, every day, or...? Or no, just, no. Just when you, you have to have one of those. You have to have one going in, and then you have to have. You go from nose when you're entering. You have to have a negative test before you go. Then we went there. We had a throat swab, um, and then that was followed up by a nasal swab. Sucks. And then that was followed by another throat swab after that. I don't think I've had the, I haven't had the throat swab. No. Wonderful. The dream come true. <laughs> I've never been so happy for yeah. somebody to tickle the thing at the back of my throat, the thing that's dangling down. Epiglots. I've never been so happy for someone to uh, shove a Q-tip there. Is it the uvula? <laughs> yeah, it's the uvula. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I get to, uh, at, at the University of Wisconsin, I get to uh, spit in a cup every week. So, it's... Really? That's it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I got to spit in a cup. How do we get that? How do we get that technology? Uh, come down to your University of Wisconsin. Uh, it's it takes a long it takes long. It's like twenty four hours though for the results. Though, uh, it? I it's get not rapid results. Uh, rapid I get results? my no, I get my results like uh maybe Same day? yeah maybe ten hours afterwards. Oh okay. So it's really oh, the, that's way really quick. the nasal ones we've been doing those were twenty four hour results. So hmm. yeah, like you can get one <laughs> spit in a cup in 10, 10 hours. Sign me up. Let's go. Got it. <laughs> Yeah. Although the problem pro problem is, you know, you're in a big room uh, with a uh, bunch 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 of people hovering over tra trash can, just like spitting into a cup, just like. <laughs> That's gross. 
Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of <laughs> kind of gross, but what what are you gonna do? Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, hopefully, Craig, where people... are you right now? <laughs> I'm at um, I'm at Lutzen Mountain Ski Resort. I'm in a condo. Um, this is Henry. There was Henry. Yeah. Hey, Henry. <laughs> He's going to get more cashews. Mm -hmm. Um, here comes my kid. No, oh, no, now he's all shy and nervous. Um, so we've been skiing the last couple of days, trying to get a few more runs in before all the snow melts. There's Martin back there. Oh, Martin. That's some sick flow. There's some good flow in that room, I tell you what. That's right. Yeah. He's, uh... He's probably up to about 18 months without a cut. Whoa, I'm a, I'm wow. only at I'm only at 12. Oh, oh, here he is. That's so, a good run. I like it. Yeah, it's it's long. It's That's close. good. Maybe maybe you two. Together, the other day he said. Go ahead. The other day he said, like out of nowhere, is the first thing that happens when COVID is done. I want to get a haircut and I want to go bowling. <laughs> not necessarily in that order <laughs> that's pretty good uh, i like it yeah he's bowled like, like twice in his life but he he, he wants just, to, go bowling, man. to go bowling yeah i yeah. hear that you should hook him up with haji maybe he liked it. maybe haji can give him some hairstyles with the longer hair colin's got got some good oh, yeah. good looks yeah you got to get in the, the braiding you, you know there's some ragnar lothbrock jeans there i tell you why that's some nice flow you can get yeah. some excellent long viking braids oh. hey can you guys be quiet though <laughs> <laughs> it's okay if you're sick. oh jeez i gotta mute them I get back in it. <laughs> what have you guys been up to where are you guys uh i'm at um, jewel's house yeah we're at my my house in my basement in the Sioux studio. We're well studio. studio. Yeah. Ooh. But we're in the bubble. My, we yeah. I don't I don't do anything other than sit at my house and work and mm. and uh that's it. And pretty much. Yeah. And and I come over to Joel's house like every once every other week. So Yeah. We've been doing it down in the ba ba basement. It's been it's been fun. It's kinda like Wayne's world but with less rock and roll. Yeah. And less hair. That's a, no, well, I yeah. totally thought Wayne's World a second ago. <laughs> when you guys just went like this. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's less crew. Uh, speaking of Wayne's World, I've got, I normally wear glasses. And the other day, when I put my hat on, it's like it was kind of sticking out like this. <laughs> um, and I looked at myself. I'm like, Christ! I'm I'm freaking Wayne's World. I'm Garth. I think Garth was the one with the glasses, right? Yes. Yes. You were Garth. That that was Garth. That's awesome. Uh oh. It looks it looks oh, bad. Back. That's all right. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully around here, everybody should get vaccinated enough uh, in time for season one to end of the podcast. So yeah, maybe by season two. Maybe season uh, when, two we can all be together again. Maybe season two we, we, we can be together, but um, I'm going to have to expand the studio, studio a little bit. It might be a little cramped in here with four, but... We'll figure it out. We'll figure it no out. No problem. All right, Colin, <clears throat> uh, thank you for joining us. But before we kick you out, uh, we have some questions that we normally ask our guests uh, when they come on the show. Joel probably sent them to you, but we'll I ask did. them to you anyway. Uh, I don't even remember all of them. Craig, do you know the... Craig, do you remember all of them? This is real professional. Yeah, I did no, It's been a did. while. It's been a since while. Since I've been on the show, so all I'm right. going to think... All right, if you had a walk-up song... Oh, yeah, that's our, be... that's our favorite one. That's our new one. It's our new favorite question. Yeah. Uh, ZZ Top. Ooh. Le lagrange oh that's a great one i love that, that song was, that was my baseball walk-up song when i was pitching come in and relief and i couldn't knock it out with some zz top mm, all right wow i like that one that's um, a good answer that's yeah a great answer. that's probably 
That's a good one. Or Sinatra. I love Sinatra. That's what Chelsea said. Chelsea said, Sinatra if you have Colin on, he's going to he's gonna yeah. say some Sinatra song. All right. Yeah. Uh, Louis Armstrong, maybe. Some Blueberry Louis Hill. Armstrong. All right. Okay. Um, boy, it's been a long time since I asked these questions. If, what's your outside of a club that is – that you would consider a home club. What is what is your favorite place to curl? Um, Hollywood curling. Hollywood curling, nice. Wow, all right. Hollywood curling stinks. Um, hopefully, it'll get better. I got that's some family still. You know, I mean, yeah. it feels like family out there. Got it. I don't have any physical family there, but I love going to LA for about a month in the summer. That's nice. Not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thing. yeah, we still gotta get out to to that uh blockbuster blockbuster spiel. Yeah, I've I heard been, it's a blast. I've been told I have to go now that they have dedicated ice. Yeah. Like, oh, the new them. building is tremendous. Yeah. Um, is it? Oh have yeah. You, have you seen it? Yeah, seen it? Yeah, I saw the I saw the, the, the camera tour with the phone through the building when mm. uh, you know we're launching some stuff and I've been a little in, somewhat involved there, not not a ton, um, but yeah, I just, I just want to help curl and grow, and that's a great place to do it. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's your favorite bond spiel, and why? Uh, uh ooh, ooh, that's a really tough one. Yeah, um, they're all fun, right? H O H. House of Hearts, I think, has to be a popular answer on the show, but yeah. a good answer. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, for various reasons. There, there's different like categories. It's not like one's the best, or right. they're very different events. So H O H um, for the debauchery it is uh, is 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 pure organized chaos in the, in one of the most wonderful ways. Um, the lupus spiel is awesome mm-hmm. as well in, yes. in a very different way. The yeah. structure of it, who comes to it, like meeting different people in kind of like a semi-competitive way is really fun. Made some of my best friends at that. Um, Come for the spiels. One I haven't got. Yes. (laughs) Come for the bacon, yes. (laughs) I feel, I still have a burn mark on my wrist (laughs) from burning myself on the bacon there, but it's worth it. Um, One of the ones I've never went to that I need to would be Bumpy Cop. Bumpy that one was supposed fun. to happen like this week, was it? This last uh, week? Uh, no, typically it's first week in June. Um, uh, uh, I went there, my w- wife went and I went there two years ago. Um, it was. You're still, uh, you're still together? <laughs> actually, that was pre. Uh, that pre, was before pre, they got married. That was before we got yeah. married. She's still and married. And then you got married. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. Um, that doesn't happen there. <laughs> uh, myself, my wife, my now wife, um, Liza from Hollywood. Um, uh, who else was there? Duffy um, and uh, Tara Pearson came, and her husband, now husband John, I think. Um, I and Pretty there, good, no. there was a there was a group group of us from the U.S. that went. And just had an absolute blast. Nice. So, if anybody's got a chance to go to Bumpy Cup in Oslo, do it. Do it. It ain't cheap, but it's fun. <laughs> Good on you for surviving it. I don't know if I'd make it. Yeah. Uh, we did. Well, you don't do, you don't do normal curling there, until you get to the fi- finals. But like we did. Then you have to take it serious. <laughs> then you have to take it, take it ser- seriously. Uh, we we did. Um, stick curling, like full Mary, uh, full up Mary Bro- Bro- Roman style. Uh, I got to skip against uh, Edeen and uh, beat beat him, so that was fun. Um, That's pretty good. I haven't beat uh, him for a while. It also didn't help having uh, Sarah and Sophia from uh, Team Sweden on my team, so that helps. That'll do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, we did. We did. And he still and got married. You're yeah. human <laughs> cheat codes over there. Yeah. Uh, I mean cheat codes is in they're really good at curling. Yes, we they're know really what you curling. mean. Yeah. Uh, I have to clarify. Yeah. Uh, we did uh, we did uh, bobsleigh curling where they took t- tabletops 
tipped him upside down. Uh, someone got sat on the ta- table, held a rock, and their teammates pushed him down, down, down the ice. And then, so your teammates pushed you until the first hog line. You slid with the tabletop and the rock, and you had to release it by the second hog line and let it go in the house. <laughs> and then there's there's speed curling. Um, uh, what else was there? A bunch of dumb there, stuff. There's a bunch of dumb stuff. Got it. And then whenever Bumpy goes up and just and starts playing uh, the shot song, everyone's got to stop and come over and take a shot. <laughs> he probably does that all the time, doesn't he? Uh, several times a game, yeah. And <laughs> and you Surprising. don't and you don't flip for hammer. You play beer pong, or or you play a tip tip tippy cup for hammer. I like that rule. That's they should do that at Cash Spiel. Yeah. at Worlds, the Briar. <laughs> I like it. I'm in. I'm I like that. Sure. Flip cup for yeah. hammer at the Briar. That'd be awesome. They could. Vic or... could do the you know, oh, play man. by play for it. <laughs> could you imagine Vic calling a, a tippy cup game? That would be outstanding. <laughs> that would, that would be, be the best way. We would have so many people watching the sport. Like, watching <laughs> <laughs> Barstool would be fully in on that. Oh yeah, there you go. If you get Barstool on board, you're you're good. We're doing spit and chicklets, awesome. Pink Whitney. Yeah. Pink Whitney waterfalls is there you what go. we're doing pre game. <laughs> nice. I like it. I like it. All right. Uh any other spiels that uh that are on this list? No, that's pretty good. That, that's a that's an extensive charity spiel list. Yeah. It's, it's important. All right. So here's a question I remember. If you can go to one bond spiel any time frame, like you could go to, you know, you could pick the 1976 such and such spiel, or, or you could play in a bond spiel with people from 1976 or, you know, 2021, what, who are you playing with? Oh, man, that's a tough okay. one. Before you answer... Uh, we have allowed our guests to have a up to five or six person team. So you can pick three people plus like one or two additionals to like be a fifth because you know somebody's going to drink too much or, you know, whatever. A, a coach, whatever you need. So you can have more than three. Just saying. Um, are we talking real curlers? You do whatever you want. Dean Gemmel said he wants to curl with Barack Obama, Obama and Tiger. Yeah. And uh, we've had, you know, Chelsea, of course, wants to curl with her dad. So, yeah. This is, uh, this if, is if, your, yeah, your list. You curl with whoever you want. Yeah. You know, Scott Belvish, the guy that makes ice in Chaska, wants to curl with us for some reason. Yeah. Short list. Yeah. That's crazy. crazy. Right? Yeah. Nobody wants to curl with us. Craig Mann. I'm thinking. I want to curl with mm, a Mr. Winston Churchill. Whoa. <laughs> wow. That would be a solid one. Um, you have to go back to the one... 70s when you can still smoke it in the club and in the ice house because yeah. he's he's smoking a cigar the whole time. Yeah. You might need might need to go back to the 40s for the, that one. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um... I would like to curl with Serena Williams. I like that. I would too. like <laughs> to curl with. Ooh, this is a tough one. I would like to curl team? with. No, no curlers on the team. I'd like to curl Ooh, with the two the two brothers from Scotland who did the grave digging. And then they, like, had the cadavers and, like, sold them to the... Um, it's a really, like, folklore. And I went into a bar called The Last Drop in Scotland. And that would be... I, I, those guys see... They, those guys figured it out. They, they worked well together, even though it was not for a good cause. So if we went curling, that seems like it'd be pretty solid. So, so Winston, Serena Williams, Winston, Winston Churchill, two guys that dig up bodies. You need one more, or are you good with that? <laughs> Well, I'm the fifth on that team. I just want to see them work together. 
You're just going to like an early season real club mm-hmm. spiel because you have no anticipation of doing anything. That's like a rice well, like open spiel. Who's skipping that, that team? Serena? She's probably the athlete. I... Although Churchill might just like. I Church- feel like he's Churchill's got to be the guy in charge because yeah. the two guys that dig up dead Bob bodies, well, they're they definitely the front end. You're, yeah, they're they're front <laughs> front end players for sure. For sure. I'm listening to Serena. My goodness. Yeah. All right. Serena's my Serena's my scout for sure. Got it. That's a good. That's an interesting team. That's like, a that's hell you, of a team. You're picking a team with no curlers. Like right. everybody else picked at least one other curler to join him. Yeah. But I like I, I like the fact that you're just like, nah, we don't need any curlers. He doesn't even want to curl. Like he's just gonna sit and drink Caesars and watch him. Like he's he's yeah. not even curling. Well, it reminds me of um, what, where my answers came from was in Red Deer at the Red Deer Curling Club in Alberta. There was there used to be a mural. Um, it was really, oh man, there, there's kind of like folklore story and it's about the Scottish guy, I believe, who curls against the devil and the devil has all sorts of people from history on his team or, or, or this Scottish bloke does as well. So it was like this huge, long thing that doesn't exist anymore, but I grew up looking at that thing and he was just like, cool. So I don't know. Hmm. I, I, I don't think I, I, I don't think it would be wise to say I want the devil on my curling team, Is but that... he might have won that game. I'm not sure. Was that the Red Deer? <laughs> that was at the Red Deer Curling Club? Yeah, but hasn't been there for probably 15, 15 years at Are least. Are you aware of this thing, Craig? No, I've never been there, but if it was no. the devil and it was in Red Deer, I don't know, maybe it was Shilly. Maybe Shilly's the devil. <laughs> Wow! You may well, have he's, he's, shots fired. He's the shot devil. He's the he's the shot devil in, uh, at that club. He supported the club very much in the past uh, through libations. That's for certain. Yeah. Well, that's good. All right, it's got to do. Club it. Every, every club's got to stay afloat somehow. So, yeah. Um, good to right. more. So, n- n- another question: How'd you get started curling? Well, that's the Garrett question. Oh. Garrett likes that question. I've got memories of riding the rock down the sheet when I was like four, three, four years old. Um, I don't really truly remember when I started curling. It was definitely before I have memories, but my, my nieces and nephews have been starting about four years old. Um, so it's kind of a thing in our family is just start before you can remember. <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah. Um, so who helped you along the way to become the curler that you are? I remember my dad didn't let me leave the curling club until I stopped being a toe slider one day. He said, you're practicing and we're not leaving until you go flat foot. Don't be an idiot, pretty much. (laughs) Uh, Lame. I'm going to teach my kids how to tuck. Do it. I'm not going to. I'm going to take them to the club. I'm not going to let them leave until they have a good tuck. Tuck and a lift delivery. (laughs) Until you look like Jeff's in this building. Nice. What do you think? No way, you're not gonna tuck. It'd be cool. If you do, you want to be cool? Tuck and lift. <laughs> yeah. Teach them how to lift. Lift too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, what advice would you give other curlers to improve their game? Um. Well, I think the most the, the most simple advice I I do give often is like to not really wear like. I think people worry about their immediate results so often that like you're never going to improve at any sport without peaks and valleys, and you're going to probably get bad before you get good. So, like just committing to actually maybe enjoying it and then trying those those fun changes and and not scared of failure. I think that's that's the advice, especially with like junior curlers. Like it doesn't matter. You could go win World Juniors. I don't think it matters. Like for your future. It's more like you can be really good and not win World Juniors and be a nice person. You'll get on the best team. But, you know, winning at a young age doesn't matter. And so what did most of what the Plies do then? Like I that. mean, he won World Juniors, so he's, he's not very nice, is he? <laughs> 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 okay. eh, Plies is a good guy. I like him. He's not a very good curler. No. So. <laughs> 
I like Ply. He, he's moldable chops. to whatever whatever you guys think he is. He is. He's either yeah. really good at curling or not good at curling. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love Ply. It's one of the best dudes ever. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I think that's all we got. Uh, before we kick you out, do you want to say thank you to anybody? I'm sure you have sponsors and and stuff. Do you want to you want to do your like NASCAR spiel? I mean, you, Team McEwen's probably got. A whole pile of uh, things on your coats. I think I have one of your coats in my in my bucket. Oh, curling stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, Pr- Princess Auto. Um, Princess Auto pretty much makes us able to like even be able to curl or even be able to say we're curlers and to train and practice. And they 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 care for us like we're family. So clearly, Princess Auto is you know an amazing partner not just not a sponsorship deal it's like a partnership so we really appreciate that and you know there, there's tons of other sponsors there's um, springland and walgreen um there is you know dynasty my own company we do a little bit um you know super lube uh is is a local based um oil change company okay um sand Hill, you know carberry sand hills uh, it's it's just been you know, everybody's been there for us when we needed them, especially in this off year. So, um, hard looking line. forward to your hardline team. Right now. Hard, hard line. Oh, how can you yeah. forget that? <laughs> oh, man, I saved your bun. I saved your buns there. You better send me a broom or something. Holy cow! Yeah. Well, I, I it go, we, I go back so far with hardline because I was the one who brought it to my teammates. I was using hardline before Mike or Reed ever did. So yeah. I'm taking full credit for bringing Hardline to those guys who therefore brought it out to the world. So there you go. I'm taking 17% of credit. 17% for their I like it. That's on, an, that's an on accurate amount. <laughs> All right, that's hey, I got a question about that. Since we're talking about brooms, how much did you know how soon as far as steering rocks around? Because I have a couple of theories that there was a couple teams that really knew how much things were moving around and played it down for a year and probably missed some shots they could have made on purpose because they didn't want to give it away. (laughs) Okay, there definitely might be people who have done that, but personally, what I remember the moment that we found out what could happen and, and the amount of how stupid I felt when I saw it happen was we were in Newfoundland at a Grand Slam, that first one of the year. And that's when Team Gushu did a ton of testing. And they were the first ones that I can remember of actually trying to make it curl. We were like, what are they doing? Never seen anyone do that before. And all of a sudden, they started making every shot. And then every team was like, oh boy, we got to do this too. And we figured it out. So that's where I was at on that. If people knew before that. Um, and we're doing stuff, then you know that's not right. But I can honestly say to you that, that I didn't know until other teams knew that you could carve it. I think what we did know was they're good for the line. But, but what happened, what came out of it after the fact is the sweeping technique changed too, which just amplified it. Because now you can still do cool things with, with sweeping technique, but at least the broom heads, as long as they come from the same roles, I think they're within the realm of each other. But there's still differences with the brooms, and we're noticing them. I noticed stuff with the Briar this year that was a little different between different brands. Between brands, wow. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Sorry, I got to yeah. tell, yeah. tell my kids to shut up for a second. So, <laughs> okay. um, so you notice difference be- from one brand to the next as far as how much it, you think it can curve or cur- uh, carve or not cur- carve? Yeah, yeah, there's some differences right now for sure between the brands. And I'm not sure if it's uh, just because the roles are different because the the roles on those ones are all from different times. So they have to be approved ones, but if they're not exactly the same, then then we're back to the whole arms race thing again, which so when you I don't say, think anyone wants. When you say roles, you're talking about roles of fabric, right? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, just yeah, to the be, broom heads so have... Just to be clear, like we're yeah. pretty clear, but sometimes... Our listeners maybe aren't, and I just wanted to be 100% clear on my own. 
So e each of the broom heads have uh, a roll number either stamped onto it or printed onto it. Mm -hmm. So you'll know what roll number it is and that it's an approved fabric. However, if the rolls come from different times and there might be slight variances in them that we have to sure. just make sure yeah. that are consistent. Wow. And do you think, so, so you think the var variances in the different rolls are, um, the, the variances in the manufacturing, do those hold up throughout games or like, cause, of, cause you're changing a broom head, like every game, every, I assume every game, every two games or probably or every game at their level. Every yeah. every game, yeah. So, hmm. then interesting. You, then, so then you're also keeping track of uh, this group is this batch of rolls, and this group is another batch, or or do you have like a hundred broom heads from like the same batch? Yeah, we'll get them all at the same time. So will other teams pro probably. Okay. So they'll reasonably it's reasonable to say that teams would probably have the same one if they had bring a hundred heads to an event, they'll have mm -hmm. all the same role, but okay. two teams okay. could potentially have different ones. I'm not trying to start a whole conspiracy thing, theory thing here. It's just oh, testing just... the waters a little bit, but that's you know, interesting. Uh, th there's different, you know, if there's three different ones that have different role numbers, then you never know. Um, you just got to look into it. And that's what, that's what uh, microscopes are for. And, you know, super high resolution cameras. Got to figure out what what's going on and make sure it's fair for everybody. Like, name of the game is just fair. We don't. Right. I don't want to be playing the game and resenting other people. I want to enjoy getting beat by better teams on you know when they have great days. That's part of the fun too. That's a good way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. I like that. All right. Well, I don't think we have anything else, man. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, keep up the good work. Your clothes look great. I like them a lot. Yeah, they're good. Uh, yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah, uh, just uh, j talk to Joel. He has an address. You can send us uh, all the stuff that you want uh, or nothing. I'm sure nothing. But, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll get nothing and like it. <laughs> yeah. Not the first time in my life I've heard that. Uh, that's it. Colin Hodgson, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot, man. Uh, we will see you again, and uh, good luck. I'm assuming you're in the slams. Good luck in the slams. Yeah. Thank you. Got All only right. a couple more nasal nasal spots. Yeah, to only go. only a few more brain tickles. Yeah. You got it. Drive safe. Thank you guys. You bet. Yeah, All right, everybody. That's it for week 13, episode 13, whatever 13. We made it. I don't know how, but we made it. Uh, of the Curling Nation podcast. Uh, that's me. Mike McDermott, Joel Deeds, Craig Brown. Garrett got the Rona vaccine this week, so he is real tired tonight. But we want to thank Colin Hodgson for coming on. That was a pretty cool uh, interview that we had. Uh, go check out Dynasty Curling stuff. They've got some cool stuff. If you want a new coat or if you have a play down team or uh, whatever, like go buy clothes from Colin. He's a good dude. Uh, but if you want to get in touch with the show, you can always email us at curlingnation at curlingnetwork.com. We're on the social medias. We're on Facebook and Twitter at Curling Nation. Instagram, we're at The Curling Nation because apparently somebody had to take Curling Nation before we could. Uh, if you want to send money to the show, you can Venmo us now. Uh, we're at Curling Nation or we have a PayPal, which is curlingnation at curlingnetwork.com. Uh, if you want to listen to the show, I mean, you're already listening, but keep listening. Uh, you can find us on your favorite podcatcher. Otherwise, you can watch us on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google. I don't know. I'm just saying words because why not? You know, those are big words. Uh, we also want to thank alchemy.com for continuing to sponsor the show. That's A-L-Q-I-M-I.com for all your IT, logistics, smart stuff. Things I don't understand, but they help out curlers. So check them out, alchemy.com. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Um, you're definitely going to want to tune in for the next show. It is going to be an absolute banger. I'm letting the cat, can I let the cat out of the bag? Sure, why not? I'm letting the cat out of the bag. We're going to have 
Wayne Mada and Glenn Howard on the next show. If you've listened this long and you don't tune in next time, you're missing out. Wayne Mada, Glenn Howard, I'll say it again. They are going to be on the next show along with me, Mike McDermott, Joel Dietz, Craig Brown, maybe Garrett Perry if he doesn't get his Rona shot again. That's all we got for episode 13. We'll catch you next week. Not next week. Next time. Whatever. Good curling, everybody. We're out.